Hello everyone, today we have to talk about flagship phones. You know that's real. Every year there's a new iPhone, a new Galaxy, a new OnePlus, a new Pixel that improves over the one that we got last year. But over the past couple of years, phones have been getting less features but more expensive. If you look at phones from a couple of years ago and compare them to what we have now, yeah, you see more bezel, slower processors, and it was more hard to find the features that we not take for granted. But if you take a closer look, you realize that phones actually used to do more than they do now. The most complainable thing that we lost is the headphone jack. Yes, your AirPods, whatever you use, maybe you like them more for when you're working out or just don't care enough to unravel a wire every time you take them out of your pocket. But it's not like they don't work with older phones. While the wired ones don't work with newer phones, actually. But the headphones have existed for a long time, actually. Believe it or not, it existed from before headphone jacks were a given in every phone. From around 2000 to 2004 is where the first Bluetooth headphones happened. And until the 2000s, when smartphones started to pick up, not all phones had a 3.5mm jack. Some phones came with headphones that plugged into their proprietary charging port, which is basically what the iPhone did after the 7. But yeah, it wasn't the given. So yeah, we got wired headphones until famously Apple removed the jack to sell more AirPods. And all other brands followed suit. Before you say any sort of reason to remove the jack, I'm gonna give you a hard no. The main reason to do it is that Bluetooth headphones are more expensive and you are paying for that. We didn't even get anything in return for the loss of the jack. We didn't even get more battery. Well, the iPhone 7 had more capacity, right? A whole 245 million power. Was that because we had more vertical space in the phone? Here's the kicker. The battery is shorter than the one on the 6S. Yup. Here's proof. It's a whole 4 millimeters shorter. It's about the same width, but yeah, it's just more dense. Actually, GSM Marino reported about the same endurance on the two phones, but slightly less on the iPhone 7. So yeah, there's no real reason. And water resistance? The Galaxy Note 9 has more radio resistance than the iPhone 7 and it has a headphone jack. It's not a coincidence that most manufacturers start focusing more on Bluetooth headphones after they remove the headphone jack out of their phones. Because it just makes more business sense. Alright, next we have the SD card. iPhone people have never even had the chance of using one. And you better believe that it's because of the fact that in order to expand your storage in your modern phones, you have to buy an entire new phone to do that. Now, it did take a really big amount of space, but in the end of life of the SD card slot, manufacturers start placing the SD card behind the SIM card, so it would take up essentially the same space. And people say that we've moved on for the new SD cards, but there's still a lot of people with 64GB phones running out of storage. And even I, with 128 gigs of storage on my phone, I could take advantage of an SD card because every time I have to film a video, I have to make sure that I import everything in my computer right away or else I have a filled up phone. I can't even have two projects going on at once without going through my computer at least once. And I'm not gonna use an external SSD because it needs to be FAT32 formatted and it's limited to 4GB its file. Also, let's be honest, you're already spending a huge amount of money on a phone and having to pitch in an extra 140 euro for more storage, it's not nice, it's not even that amount of, it's not, mm, it's not enough. You get like 100 gigs for that price. <laughs> it is basically a price of like a 1 terabyte SD card. Alright, so, yeah. These old phones have some features that you might miss in your new phone. Great, but let's take a look at what new phones have to offer. It's not like we haven't improved on some places, right? Walking over the camera argument, we all know that every year we get better and better in cameras. Even though... Let's be honest, who cares? YouTubers make a big deal about it, but of course they do. They make videos, they need a camera, of course they care about it. And for the rest of people who will just shoot TikToks and capture memories, about 4 to 6 years ago, we reached the point where most phones that aren't low ends have a good enough camera. I've made a lot of these videos with like an iPhone 8 and Pixel 3a, and I could continue filming with them, it's not a big deal. Performance though, well, yeah, they've gotten faster, but we're at a place where the biggest issue is unoptimized software. We're pushing the envelope to try to make the fastest phone possible, when some people still manage to find phones from 8 years ago that, yeah, running today's software with today's standards, it's slower, but not unusable. 
maybe a mid-range phone from six years ago does feel slow now, but a flagship from a bit before can still stand up for itself. Also, better displays is something that is honestly absurd. Most phones have way too much resolution, and while the inclusion of HDR has helped to fix the problem where the sun is literally too bright to use the phone outdoors, I think that's all we have to do. A hundred and twenty hertz is a toy for people who spend too much time on Twitter. I'm sorry, but it's true. If you said you will never use a six hertz phone because it feels choppy, you have to touch more grass. Look, look I get it. It feels smooth. But most complaints come from people who are used to 120Hz or higher, touch 60Hz and feel disgusted. My phone right now has 120Hz and I liked it. And when I switched to 60Hz, I didn't like it. But after keeping it like that for a while, I forgot about it. And the extra battery was worth the top your experience. I don't really care. Gamers will profit out of it. But look, I'm not a huge mobile gamer and when I play, I do turn it up to 120Hz. But haven't we as a society established that real gamers only game on a PC. Also, the Steam Deck is 60Hz, the Switch is 60Hz, most if not all TVs are 60Hz, most computer monitors are 60Hz, like heck, the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros got 120Hz last year, and the new MacBook Air and Pros of this year didn't, and not a lot of people cared, so no. Don't cry about it. Also, the screen to bezel ratio wars of 2017 were mostly just about the top and bottom. People actually complained about not enough side bezel to grip the phone. Where you're reaching across the screen one handed or turning the phone in your hand, say, to watch a movie. So sure enough, the first time I watched a movie on the Note 10, I ended up with my notification shade across it, then my player controls once I had swiped that away. And get what? We got more bezel than before. Also, we all hate the notch. We do. Only until recently we've gotten phones with the only good notch, the middle hole punch. And a lot of people just prefer the phone to be a bit taller to accommodate the camera, a better speaker, and the beloved notification LED. Speaking of LED, OLED. It was a thing since years ago. We've gotten better at it. Again, the HDR thing pushed off the main issue of OLED, which is too little brightness. But Always on has been a thing for a big while. Okay, so what else do modern phones have? Oh, a bigger display for those who care. I don't. In fact, I prefer a more normal size, not minuscule. The iPhone 5S is a tad too small, even for the most small phone lovers. But yeah, if you like a big phone, most, no, all new phones are really big. The Galaxy S22 was coined by MKBHD to be almost compact. That's a lie, Marquez. This has me feeling like it's about as compact as the phone can possibly be. It doesn't even get close to compact, it's just that you use the gigantic phones. Well, you did say almost, which is not precise measurement, and as long as you have hands bigger than me, it is almost compact. But it doesn't make the point that it's alright hard to find a phone that works well with people with average size hands. Okay, that whole segment was proof that no, there isn't much reason to prefer new phones. Yeah, some people might want something that's better in a new phone, like better performance, better battery, or an opportunity like Samsung DeX and Motorola are ready for, which are desktop experiences coming from your phone. So, if you want to play something like a camera, computer, a gaming console, or a tablet, the best of the best is what you'll find today. But if you want a smartphone, something that goes everywhere you go, and helps you out in your day to day, maybe something older will be better for you. And you'll save up a lot of money. Instead of spending 800 on a phone, spend 200 and save those 600 for something else. Maybe a tablet, Steam Deck, or a chunk of a computer. I hope you like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.